Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, if you can uh, lower that music. So I just want to welcome everyone back. I think we have like 15 people here. Um, we're only allowed to have 23, so we almost have a, a, a packed house. <laughs> But I want to welcome uh, those of you that are also outside in the parking lot. I know there's a few of you out there. Uh, I know, I'm hoping that uh, there's some of you guys that are connected through Facebook Live. Uh, I hope you guys got the text and were able to log in. We had some technical difficulties. Moving forward, we're going to try to have it on YouTube Live, or maybe both. But I uh, just want to say good morning to everybody. Before we start, I want to go over a few administrative items. For those of you who were with us during our leadership training, uh, but our leadership team, we worked really hard to get the church open and, and to make sure that we follow guidelines set by the state, the county, and our district office, right? Because uh, we want to be submitted to to our, our leadership and our authority, right, over us. And so uh, we want to set a good example to everybody, and, and most importantly, we want to keep everyone safe. And, and healthy, right? Because although we know that sharing is caring, we don't want to share the COVID virus, right? <laughs> um, so I just want to let you guys know that our, our leadership team, we all read the 13 page packet uh, sent out by the California Department of Public Health. Uh, we've studied it, and we were also required by our district office to. Uh, uh, come up with a site and worship plan. And so I just want to go over that with you and those of you that are going to be maybe watching this even later. Uh, but the site plan, and I'm going to go over these before I, I lead you guys into worship, but the first thing is, it states here, attendance in California is limited to 25% of building capacity. For us, that's, we estimated about 23. It might be 25, but we, we want to make sure we didn't go over that uh, capacity. So our building is 23. So we're hoping, moving forward, that we'll be allowed to maybe have 50% in here. But right now it's 25%, which is about 23 people. Uh, the guidelines state that we must provide hand sanitization stations and signage, which you guys see out there. Screen attendees for fever or symptoms. We have data back there with a infrared touchless uh, uh, thermometer. And so we're just doing that to make sure we keep you guys safe as well. Rearrange a seating to allow for physical distancing between family units. Uh, those of you guys in Facebook Live or outside can't see our chairs here, but they're pretty uh, separated. And uh, so we have uh, room to do aerobics. So uh, good job on the leadership team. Tape off unused areas. You guys will see caution tape here and there. Uh, frequent cleaning of high touch surfaces. We have uh, Mrs. Chan is in the hallway. She's ready to clean the bathrooms down every single time they're used. Right now, we're letting one person or one family in at a time. Uh, lock open or hold open all possible doors. You won't find any closed doors uh, that you need to get through uh, in this building. So there's only a few doors, but you'll see that they're all wide open. Remove or block any touch items in the lobby. We pulled a lot of the brochures and we taped off the other ones we didn't want to move. Uh, but please do not touch those brochures. If you would like something, uh, ask one of the ushers, which is going to be May or Dana back there. No food or coffee service. Uh, we did uh, advise everyone in the last video to bring your own water. Uh, there aren't any water, waters available, uh, water sources available here, but if you run into an emergency, you need something, ask our ushers, okay? They'll make sure they uh, drown it in uh, hand sanitizer or spray it down with Lysol. <laughs> If there's an emergency, okay, we'll figure that out. We're already having technical difficulties, but that just tells me that Satan does not like what we're doing right now. Praise the Lord. Okay, the last bit that I want to go over is the worship specific activities. Uh, children must sit with their family members and require all participants to wear masks. And we know just recently that that even went further. Now we're required to wear them everywhere where we can't uh, social distance, right? But in our church, we're going to require everyone to wear a mask unless you're up here on stage, which there will only be one person at a time up here. Uh, eliminate all personal touch activities, so there will be no handshaking, no hand holding. We all know this, right? Do some uh, air high fives and some elbow taps and, you know, 
So, spiritual hugs, right? <laughs> or, or kick each other's feet. Yeah, I like that one. I like that. I'm going to do that. <laughs> Eliminate all items that are passed by hands. That includes communion trays, offering plates. Uh, so in regards to offering, you guys will see two stations there where you guys can actually use a pen, write on the envelopes, and, and give an offering. Uh, those pens have been uh, uh, cleaned off with Lysol and disinfectant, so uh, feel, feel safe doing that. Uh, no sharing of microphones up here for pulpits. Uh, the building. Uh, recommend shorter service today. These should be done around 1035 is what we're aiming for if I can hurry up here. Uh, and then at the end of the service, we're gonna, I'm going to uh, dismiss you guys per group, okay? Just so that we don't get congested over there uh, by the doorway. And then last but not least, we're going to uh, encourage our congregation to fellowship outside while practicing physical social distancing. Amen? Amen. All right, so why don't you guys all stand and we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Man, we are going to worship and sing some uh, a song together. It's been a long time coming, and uh, I'll tell you, I'm kind of happy I got to do a video. <laughs> so, and we're going live. Before we start, I just want to say happy Father's Day to those fathers out there in uh, digital online land. For those of you guys out in the parking lot, and for the handful of uh, fathers in this building, and we just want to say happy Father's Day to you. Our Father in Heaven, uh, God Almighty, we just thank you so much. So Father, we just praise you, God. We just thank you so much. It's been a long road, uh, long road, Lord, and we're here now. We're just so thankful for our leadership, God, and for those that have prepared this building and our worship so that we can gather. And I'm hoping, God, that uh, uh, very soon here we will be able to meet and worship without any restriction. But until then, God, we'll do what we need to do to bring you glory. We just praise you. We, we just hope that our song, our uh, just being together here will just uh, satisfy you, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Because what that symbolized is the fact that we could be resurrected. And we know that resurrection points to eternity in heaven with you. And we know that to access that resurrection power, to access eternal life in heaven that all we have to do is say yes as Jesus said yes 
We don't have to understand it at all. We don't have to have answers to questions. All we have to do is take a proverbial leap of faith and say, yes, I want you, Jesus, in my life. We have to believe it in our hearts and profess it with our mouths that Jesus is Lord. Yes. Take that leap of faith and we will obtain that resurrection and that eternal life in heaven. So Father, we thank you on this Father's Day. We're so reminded of how good of a Father you are. How unconditional your love is that you would Go through all the trouble, which is not trouble at all for you. But all that from Genesis to Revelation in the Bible, all that was because of your pursuit of love for your creation. So we feel love this morning. And for those of for those that are out there that are just not feeling love, I pray God that they would experience the love of our Heavenly Father. I pray, God, that you would bless the earthly fathers today on this day. So we pray for those in our church that are fathers. Bless them, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor's going to wait for me to get off the stage and then he's going to come up. Good morning. good morning. How's my sound back here? We good? We good now? Hey, I feel like I'm planting a church again. A few people are starting all over. It was, it's actually a good feeling. I don't know where everybody's at, but you know what? It is Father's Day. How are we doing this morning? Uh, we're doing good. Hey, are we? been a while since I've been in the church with some folks and uh, it's quite a new experience. I want to say good morning again and we see what's going on out there and it leaves us in a lot of ways of thinking that's not our norm. We, we see that and they call it the new norm, the way we're doing things. It's called uncharted territory because people really don't know what they're really doing in the midst of all this but God knows. Amen? Amen. So we see that and we see what's going on and we see that God is in control. This is supposed to take place, by the way, all these things that are happening. The Bible says in end times, they're going to happen. We see in the book of Matthew, Jesus talked about that. These times are going to happen. And we also, we, we got to look at this. We mean we should be living in some kind of joy here because we're seeing Bible prophecy being fulfilled. And I was praying to God, I was talking to God uh, the other day, and I said, God, how do I relate a Father's Day message and all this? In the midst of all this, and the battle, and the war, and everything, and what's happening, uh, we got uh, rumors of wars, we got uh, countries overseas that are doing all kinds of stuff they normally don't do because of our situation. So we see this, and I was going, God, how do I relate a Father's Day message to this? And, and God took me to King David. And his father, and I, I kind of look at that there, and I, I see what's happening. In King David, if you go to First uh, Samuel chapter 17, your Bible, starting in verse 4, it kind of lays it out. I'm not going to go into it, I'm just going to kind of explain it to you. It lays out the reality of uh, what's going on. And, and King David was a young man, he sent his father, his father sent him to the battlefield. Can you imagine that? King David's father sent young David as a boy into the battlefield, up to the battlefield to find out what was going on and to take some provisions for his brothers that were up there as soldiers. And I look at that and I say, well, here's a dad sending his son into a place of battle. And I look at that and I go, wow, this is something for a father to do that. So we see that and, King, and young David as a boy goes there and by the way, he's the youngest and he never, you know, how it is to be someone young in your family. If you're not the firstborn son, you can kind of relate to that. You're always competing. But David never did that. But here he is sent up there to the 
battlefront. He goes there, and King David looks around, and he's, we have to see reality here taking place. We look at the world, we see where we live, and we see the reality of what's going on. But King David looks around, and he brings up the reality, what's really going on. He kind of brings it up in, in 1 Samuel 17, 4, and he kind of, he's kind of talking in verse 26 there. If you go down, and King David kind of, he, go, he goes like this. What's going on here? Who is uh, this? What, ha what, 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 ha what does the guy get that takes down this Philistine giant called Goliath? I mean, maybe you read the story of David and Goliath in, in the Bible, but and King David kind of addresses uh, the king there and so forth. And what does the man receive who takes down this uh, this great Philistine? He didn't call him Goliath, by the way. He just wanted to know who took him down. Because king David wouldn't use the word Goliath, and Goliath means back then it meant a witchcraft, soothsayer, fortune teller. That's what the word Goliath meant, and, and King David wouldn't bring up the name because they don't want to lift this uh, person up to be bigger than he was. He was nine foot tall, by the way. Nine feet tall. And we've had people in the United States that have been eight foot, 11 inches tall. We've heard of people like that. So we know it's possible to get that tall. And the Bible talks about giants that lived in the days, back in the days of Genesis. But we see what's going on here. King David goes up there, and he's looking around, and he, he sees this, and he says, who is this Philistine, this uncircumcised Philistine, that uh, has an army, that this army's here, to go against the army of the living God? And I thought that was pretty powerful right there. King David says, the army against the living God. And we see what's going on now. And the nation of Israel was in fear. They were afraid, they were, they were fearful because this army was an advanced army. They all had armor, they all had heavy armor, they're all decked out with war equipment, everything. They were meant for, they were made, designed to go into battle, kind of like the Roman soldiers were years later. And the Philistines, the, the only people that had armor was the king and one other person. And no one else had armor, no one had nothing. In fact, they had no weapons, they had no swords, they had no spears, but most of the Israelites had a little slingshot you threw and they had a few rocks they could throw at the Philistines and they're up there facing this massive army. And as I look at that, I'm going, do we serve a mighty God or not? We're going to find out here. Should we be secure in the situation we're in right now? This morning I got up, I, I went into prayer service at 7 o'clock in their district. And after that I kind of looked at the news to see what's going on. And I saw in San Francisco where the missions that they established along the coast they were pulling down the statues of the people holding the crosses. They were pouring them down and beating on them. Anybody see that on Facebook? Yeah. That was something. To see that, what's really going on, and it kind of reminds me of what's happening here with King David. It's as a young boy, as he faces this giant. We're facing a giant today, aren't we? You and me, we're facing giants in the, in the world, in our, in our jobs, in everything we're doing, in our health, and all this stuff, and what's going on with all the hospitals and everything, and everything we're facing, we're facing giants. We're facing it, we're, we're seeing our world come down, we're seeing the United States come down. We're seeing it falling, and Bible prophecy says it's gonna happen. Just like Bible prophecy talked about the war with the Philistines and the Israelites, you know that went on forever, they never were totally defeated the Philistines. It went on, battle after battle, year after year, and it's always happened, they go away, come back, go away, come back. And the enemy kind of does that too, he goes away and he comes back. Jesus faced that. He faced the enemy, then the enemy went away to a more appropriate time, it says, when he went in the wilderness. We have to see we're facing an enemy that's ruthless. John 10, 10, for the thief comes to kill and destroy, but Jesus says, I come to give you life into the fullest. We need to grasp that. Young David there, he's facing Goliath, he's there, he's in the battlefield. He goes against uh, this uh, giant, and we know the story. One rock, one little sling, and he takes out the giant. It was God who did it to use this young boy to do that, to send a message that he is in control. That everything is in control. Just like the time of Moses, when Moses went before Pharaoh. God let him do it. God let him know he's in control. We need to see that today. On Father's Day. Fathers, how do we address our kids? What do we say? What do we say to them? That God is, he's got this. He's in control. We need to let them know this as fathers. We need to secure them in that as fathers. We need to do that. Mother's Day, you did that. You ladies do that. Father's Day, we want to secure our children that God's got this. This is all his plan from the very beginning. And it's going to happen just the way God laid it out. And we can be a part of that. And we can have joy. And we can, have, we can be happy in the midst of all this tragedy because we see 
scripture being fulfilled. Amen? Amen? We see it happening. God's in control. God's got it. And God's going to take care of everything. We don't have to worry about that. And we look at that there, and I look in the Bible in Jeremiah 29, 11, and God says this, For I know the plan I have for you. And it's good, God says. God says it's good. He says it's good. And he's got everything in control. He's got a great plan for us. He's already laid it out for us. And in Philippians 4.19, it says this. This is the same God that's always taking care of you. And he's going to provide for you, it says there. It says he's going to provide for you and take care of you in the midst of all this. We need to see that God has got control of all this, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how horrible it looks, no matter how bad our life is, and why this happened to me, why is this happening to me, what's going on, why is the world like this, what's happening? But we need to see that God has a better plan. We may not like what God's doing right now in our lives. We may not like it. We may not like how it turned out for us. We may look at the situation and say, you know what? Those people are living better than me. Why is this happening to me? I've been faithful. I've been doing this. Why is this happening to me? We may come with that kind of idea, that way of thinking. But you know what? God has a bigger picture and a bigger plan. And it's good. It's going to be good. We just have to trust him, believe him, no matter how bad it gets. And it's hard sometimes. It's hard to trust God at times. That's why people have doubts. But these doubts are good because they get us focused where we need to be. I imagine a young David going facing that Goliath, or that giant. He, he, some people say he has great faith, but I can imagine going down there in that valley to face this big robot coming because he's full of armor, like a big robot coming against David. I imagine for a moment there, there's got to be something there. Even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane had that moment. If there was any other way, this stuff could pass before me. Everybody, even Jesus, for a moment, we're going to go through stuff. We're going to face stuff. This is where we find out about our mighty God. That he brings us through it. That it works out. Many of us got loved ones out there that aren't giving their life to Jesus. And that time's going to come where very few will make it, the Bible says. But our job and our mission is to encourage them as dad. You know, I'm a father. I have two daughters. And I'm blessed because uh, I have a wife that uh, she got saved before me. And she made sure my children were brought up in the Lord. She made sure of that. And that's the main thing. I don't know how they turn out, what happens when they get sick or they get cancer or whatever. That's the second issue. The main issue is they have Jesus. They have a Savior. They have a place to go. And that's the main thing we want to face. We're facing a lot right now. Look at us right here. You don't see a lot of people in our church, right? There's a lot of fear out there. A lot of people, a lot of loves Father's Day. They may be out and travel with their dads. I don't know. But we got to see the reality of this. You know, a lot of people are afraid to come to church. They're afraid. They're actually uh, afraid to come to church because of that or this, or they might get the disease or whatever it may be. You know, I don't know the story, but we have to see the reality of this. So we're actually doing pretty good. Almost all the seats are full, right? Amen? Amen. <laughs> I mean, look at around here. They're almost all full. We've only got a few left, you know, so it's working out. But we've got people outside. I don't know who's outside until I go out there. But God's in the midst of all this. And as dads, we need to see that. How many fathers do I have here? Raise your hand. I mean, dads. You're a dad, man? You become a dad. Okay. <laughs> You're feeling real good. We got a couple of dads here. Okay. okay. But we, we need to get we need to let our children know that there is there is hope. There is hope. You know, it just uh, my wife just brought something to my attention. In Seattle, there's this small area. They got it blocked off. They call it their own little city. Anybody ever hear about that? called CHOP or something like that. What's it called? Yeah, I think it's called CHOP or something. Anyway, a missionary, a guy went in there to preach the gospel. He, went, he goes inside that city to proclaim the gospel. And uh, the uh, a bunch of gays and people and lesbians got a hold of him and started getting him on the ground and started kissing him and stuff like that and jumping all over him. We have to see what's really going on in the world. We're facing this. The last days are going to be like this. <coughs> we have to understand that this is all prophesied that's going to happen. We may be facing giants but we're going to have victory through God. And through this, people are going to get saved. Can you believe that? Through all this stuff that's going on, people are still going to receive the gospel and get saved. And our job is to proclaim the gospel to them and save, lead as many as we can to Jesus so he can save them. That's the only mission we got. We may lose everything. In fact, uh, our, everything's coming down. Your, your homes, your, your land, your wealth, your money, everything may eventually come down. 
crash. But with Jesus, we have victory. We have, we have riches beyond understanding. So we need to see that this Father's Day. Fathers, encourage your children that God's in control. Encourage your children that we are facing a giant, but God is bigger, and God will see us through it. Amen? Let's all stand just for a moment. The best part of church is the altar call. And here we, we'll do it a little bit differently, but it's the altar call. And I, I'm just going to talk to you right now as a pastor. You can tell us. We're going to pray as a congregation, but does anybody have a prayer request? They need prayer for Anybody here? We pray for them? Yes, go ahead. Somebody, you can read, yeah. Yeah. Pray for your sister. Okay. We will do that. Does she have Jesus? Well, we're going to pray for that too. Okay. What's her name? Heidi. Heidi? We're going to pray for her. No prayer request. Yes. Okay. Daniel. Okay. We'll pray for him. We're going to do that at the congregation. Yes. Go ahead, Thomas. More work hours, I understand that. Uh, when you, uh, it's better to have a little more cash, right? I understand that, brother. I understand that. Any other prayer requests while we're here? Yeah, go ahead, Cindy. Your son, Rob, the one with leukemia? How's he doing? Doing okay. Okay. We're, we're facing these giants, but you know what? God is greater. God is greater. As a father, we want to encourage them. So we'll pray. What's his name again? Rod. Same Rod. Same name. I can remember that. Rod. Rod. We're going to pray for Daniel. We're going to pray for Heidi. Heidi, okay, we're going to pray for Heidi. Danny. Anybody have a prayer request? Anybody else? Yeah, Johan. I've had a pinched nerve since January. Oh. Okay. Um, we used to pray for my arm, but it was because of a pinched nerve, and it's still, it's still there. Well, don't pick up the fishing pole to us. Take care of it. <laughs> Probably why it's pinched. What's that? What's that? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that'll kind of do it every time. But anyway, yeah, but we'll pray for that. We'll pray for that, Johan. We'll pray for that. What's that? I'm sorry, what's that? I got a plate and four screws in my arm. I know you do. I know you do. You look, you should have been a lot better than before. You're doing good. You're doing good. Okay, you've gone through a lot on that. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, Mrs. Coop. Speak loud, because it's hard for me to hear. Your sister in Texas, what's going on with her? No, the sister to become healthy. Her sister in Texas to become healthy. She's here, but sister's health. Sister's oh, her health. health. Okay, we'll pray for that. Does she have Jesus? Yeah, yeah. Amen on that. Amen on that. We'll definitely pray for her. Okay, so I want you to help me now. We're going to help me. If I forget somebody, I forget a name. Yeah. What's that? Okay, okay. May, yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. We'll pray for that. We'll pray for that. So. Yeah, go ahead. My daughter, Eddie. What's going on? What are we praying for? She either, uh, now, we need to go either, uh, on the hospital. Got the job. She, 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 we're praying for a job or she got the job? She, we have a job. She needs a Pray that she gets a job. Okay, okay. If I miss one, you let me know, okay? Let's, uh, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Right now, we just bring up Heidi. We bring her up to your altar right now for healing upon that girl. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray uh, we're here at your altar. It's been a while. We're at your altar. And we're praying for this lady to be healed. We're praying for her salvation also. We lift her up to your altar now in the name of Jesus. We trust you. You're in control. We know that. We know you answered prayer. We know they go. we go before you. You hear our prayer. And you will answer. So we trust you by faith and we pray in Jesus' name. For that woman, Heidi. In Jesus' name. We lift up right now. We lift up uh, what's going on with me and uh, what's going on with her. Right now, what's going on with her, we pray for healing upon her in the name of Jesus. We lift her up to you in Jesus' name for the healing to take place. We also lift up her father, what's going on. Father, I just got uh, one. He's going through a lot, going through these physical things. He, he's up in age, Father. I pray that he comes to know you as I know you. I pray in Jesus' name for salvation for that man to be redeemed by your blood, by your power. To be redeemed in the name of Jesus. No other name but that name. Jesus' name. 
I pray for Daniel. I lift him up to your altar right now. I pray for healing upon this, this brother of mine. I pray for healing. I pray in the name of Jesus for healing upon him in Jesus' name. I lift him up to your altar. I pray that you open the door for the mom to see her son again. I pray that you open the door. Relieve us of this, what's going on, Father. Free your people in this area, Father, in Jesus' name. I lift up Annie. I pray in the name of Jesus for her to find that job at the hospital. She's a registered nurse. I pray for her right now in Jesus' name. Open that door in the name of Jesus. Open that door for that name, in that name, in that name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I lift up right now Rod. Is going through this leukemia. I pray in Jesus' name to be upon him. <coughs> I open, open his heart, Father, open him up to you that he receive the gospel and be saved. What good is it to be healed if you don't have salvation? So I lift him up to you in the name of Jesus. <coughs> in Jesus' name. I pray for healing upon that man also. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray for Mrs. Ku's sister. I pray for her, Father. I pray for healing upon her. She's your child. She's your servant. I pray for healing upon her in the name of Jesus. No other name, Father. We come here. We're in your altar. We're here in your place of worship. It's been months, but we're lifting these people up to you in the name of Jesus for healing, Father. It's been a while since we've done this. We just we praise you for it for bringing us back to this place, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up Johan. What's going on? I pray for healing upon his pinched nerve in that area, in his body, Father. We pray in Jesus' name for healing there. In the name of Jesus, we pray for healing upon that man. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Did I miss anybody? Thomas, yeah, I'll get your job. I'll work hours. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for this man who's been working faithfully. He's always been working at the same place. He's been there for years now, and we pray for more hours for this man, even though things are cutting back and there's a lot going on in our society and jobs and people are being cut hours. We pray for this man to have an increase in hours. Somehow open a door for him in Jesus' name. He came to your altar asking for your help, Father. Honor him through this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to thank you for being here. Yeah, did I miss something? Can we all pray for our nation and president? Yes, we sure can. You know what's going on, right? There's a lot going on right now, and God's in control, but we have to do our part. We pray for our leaders, and we vote. We believe in voting. We do vote when that time comes, you know, and God will lead you through that who to vote for. But we want to pray for our leaders. We want to be faithful to that. And when we pray for these people who is doing what God wants, that's where we want to go. And we want to lift them up because the enemy's going to come and try and destroy our leaders. Police. What's that? Police. Yeah, and our police. Yeah, you see what's going on. I just heard where a lot of police are, re are resigning and leaving because of the way they're being treated by the other leaders. I thought that was something, you know. I never thought I'd see this. In my 50, uh, 50 years ago, if I looked and saw this coming, you wouldn't believe it. You know, I used to watch movies, you couldn't even put one swear word on there, you'd go to court. Things have changed. We're living in the last days, but we, we continue to pray for our leaders, for protection in the midst of this big battle. Father, we just pray in Jesus' name. We lift up our police officers around the world. We lift them up to you in the name of Jesus to bring a protection, to bring favor upon them. So many of them have died now through this what's going on. We just pray in Jesus' name that you bring a, a, a great healing upon our nation in this area with our police force. We pray in Jesus' name. And you said on the cross, Jesus, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. But here in this situation, we come to your altar. We lift up our president. We lift up our president, our cabinet. We lift them up to you in the name of Jesus. Bring protection upon our president, our leader. Bring protection upon him and his staff. And I just pray for that in the name of Jesus. No other name, no other power. In the name of Jesus, we lift them up to your altar right now in Jesus' name. We pray for what's going on in our nation as a whole. We lift that up to you. We pray in the name of Jesus as they tear down your statues, as they tear down your crosses, as they tear down your name, as they take you out of the school, as they, as they try to erase your name from every pile on. They try to erase your name from all these areas. They want to erase your name from the history books. They want to erase your name from all these things. And they want to add it with sin and filth. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you give us the endurance, the strength to see us through this battle as we continue to bring you forward in the name of Jesus, as we continue to go forward as Christian soldiers. 
We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for being here. And uh, Johan, you can dismiss him any way you want. Let me put my mask back on. We can meet out in the parking lot. Church, uh, once again, to remind you, this is going to be the normal for a little bit, so just wait for uh, you to be dismissed. So I'm going to have just a back row. If you can just head outside. Once again, there's offering. There's an offering box station out there. Uh, and then go ahead, just from row to row, Rods, and you guys can go, and then just kind of space yourself out as you guys go out. We'll, we'll get better and better at this. So I think we're all good now. Thank you so much.